I recently wanted to do another Genshin Impact Challenge where I lose characters as I play, even though last time I did one of these I hated it. The problem with that challenge is that it was all luck that decided which characters I lost, which led to a lot of anger. This time I want it to be more based on my skill as opposed to luck, and it just so happens that one of the most popular forms of challenges for most games is the Nuzlocke. If you never heard of a Nuzlocke, let me explain. A Nuzlocke is a term in the Pokemon fandom for a set of rules that make the game harder. The most common rule is that if someone's HP reaches 0 in battle, they are considered dead and have to be either permanently boxed or released. There are other rules that people add, but these are the basic rules. But what would the rules be if you translated over to Genshin Impact? Well, here are the rules that I came up with. If a character falls in battle, they are considered dead and cannot be used anymore for anything. No healing items in battle, no fighting in co-op, shield characters are banned. There will be other rules added as we go on, but these are the baseline ones. Now let's see if I can beat a Genshin Impact Nuzlocke. Everything before unlocking Wishing is not really important to go over, so I'll summarize it. We get both Lumine and Amber and there were no close calls. Now we can wish. I have honestly no real preference for what we get. Just be something. Just don't be a shield character. Are you actually kidding me? Not only is Kirara a shield character, she's also one of my least favorite characters, so this was double misery. Four star. Thanks for the not shield character game. Thank you. Zhengling is one of the best characters to get early on. She has good pyro application and can hit hard. First it's the three domains and none of them were that difficult. Amber and Kai's domain had enemies that were quickly taken out and we can skip most of Lisa's domain by doing this. The only free character that I'm interested in this early is Lisa. We have Zhengling and pairing her with Lisa can cause some pretty strong overloader reactions. Lisa's elemental skill, even when half charged, also can be very devastating. Our team at the end of the quest is Lumen, Kaya, Zhangling, and Lisa. Now we need to get to AR10 to start Monstad Act 2. A thing that's nice about a challenge of this nature is that there's no real problems we have to overcome while AR grinding. For other challenges you have this challenge specific stipulation to contend with, but for this one it's basically like a normal playthrough except dying has far greater consequences. This early on, enemies are low leveled and weak, and there's a really easy way to get to AR-10 very fast. You just do a bunch of the adventure handbook challenges and then you're quickly at AR-10. We even surpassed AR-10 while doing them because of the animocula I collected. I gathered up enough Primo Gems to get a 10 pull on event banner, and getting to AR-10 nets you 10 standard wishes, so let's use them. It's Dory! Then we do a temple. We get a 5 star. See, it's just a purple 5 star. Wait, I don't want to say that. I don't want to coach me. Uh, it's, it's a character. That's a character I'll take. I'll take a Sucrose. I'll, I'll use a Sucrose any day. Getting two of my favorite characters back to back feels pretty nice. I've already voiced how much I like Dory on this channel before, but I haven't been able to for Sucrose. She was my original favorite character, and I've been wanting to use her on a playthrough challenge for a while. Now that I have her, she is definitely going in the party. And same with Dory. Now we can start Act 2. We meet Venti and then go destroy the Eye of the Storm at Windrise. When the Eye of the Storm flies up, we're easily able to hit it with Lisa's normal attack. We steal the Holy Liar and then meet Diluc. Later we go into the Fatui hideout. We have a trial Diluc here, but even if we didn't, there wouldn't have been any problems. Overload Lisa and Jangling paired with Sucrose is a really powerful combination. Next we need to get three teardrop crystals. To get the first one we need to fight a ruin guard, and you could probably guess how that goes when we're mostly dealing elemental damage. We get the next one by just opening a chest, and the last one is in a domain. Sometimes when I was in battle and I was reaching lower HP, it would intentionally not heal. I only started doing this because most of the fights were just getting way too easy for me. I didn't do this a lot early on, but I especially started doing it a lot in Liyue. Anyway, the domain was easy. Now I can call the Valen. Here, kitty. You can have cheeseburger. That's the end of Act 2. Now we need to get to AR-18 to start Act 3. There's no real easy way to get to AR-18, but we do have all of Leeway to explore and some story quests. After completing Kaya's story quest, I wished a few times on Standard Banner. 
Okay, poor sir. <sighs> God damn it. I was gonna say for a second that she's not that bad, but then I remembered she's a shield character and those are banned. This was unfortunate, but I really wanted to use her. She's another one of the characters I've wanted to use on a playthrough challenge before, but I've never gotten a real chance to. You know what? Screw it. I'm adding a new rule. This new rule is called the Jinyan Clause. I can use Jinyan if I don't build her as a shield character. I can still use her shield, but I can't build off of it. With that rule in effect, we replace Dory for Jinyan. A lot of leeway of world quests, some commissions, and some random exploring later, we're at AR-18 and we can start Act 3. Since we have Electro for the Hydro Abyss Mage at the front of Storm Terror's Lair, the fight only took about 10 seconds. Inside Storm Terror's Lair, we need to trigger 3 light actuators and only one of them requires combat. It was a similarly easy battle to the other one, but this time with a Pyro Abyss Mage and 2 Dendro Summatrils. They never were able to apply burning to me, which is one of the most terrifying reactions in the game. Now I can fight Tavalin. Just look at what happens when we take down a shield. Try not to enjoy this too much. <laughs> yeah, come a little closer. <gasps> oh my god, that was so fast! Now Act 3 is over. Now we need to get to Air 23 to start Liyue. Not long after completing Act 3, we get to Air 20 and both raise our world level and unlock Spiral Abyss. Before doing Spiral Abyss, I did a few wishes. Four star. Didn't have to go to hard page for a four star. Ah, uh, Candace. Does that count as a shield character? I decided that Candace doesn't count as a shield character because she only shields herself. Even then, I probably won't use her. In Spiral Abyss, I got nine stars on both floor one and floor two. We still have a few story quests left on my backlog, so let's get those done. We did Amber story quest, Jengling story quest, Lisa story quest, Deluke story quest, and Razor story quest. Doing this gets us past AR-23 and now we can start Liyue. The team right now is Sucrose, Jinyan, Zhengling, and Lisa. The man with a million names dies and now we have to tell the Adepti about his death. The energy recharge buff we get from Mooncarver made the onslaught of Melilith soldiers easy. Next is Mountain Shaper. We need to break a little over half of the amber on the mountain to find this guy's brother, but after that next is Clad Retainer. We make some food for her and then go inside her domain and skip it by climbing on and jumping off this tree. Lastly is Xiao. We make some food for him and then chase a ghost who leads us to a Ruin Hunter. And this fight went how every other fight went. This was around the point where the easiest of the challenge was starting to get to me. Not only did it make me less careful, but it also made me try some more dangerous things. There's no real risk of taking a lot of damage with Jin Yan on our team, and when we use Zhengling's burst, we could just use our burst in normal tech with Lisa to destroy all enemies, and with the instructor set on Sucrose we can increase our elemental mastery even more. But putting that to the side, we completed Act 1. Now we need to get to AR-25 to start Act 2. The main thing I do during this AR grind is fight bosses. We're about to reach AR-25, and at AR-25 we're going to be able to raise our world level to ascend our characters. All three of the bosses I have to fight, Pyro Regisfine, Animal Hypostasis, and Electro Hypostasis, are pretty simple bosses that go down easily. Once I'm done with that, I quickly get to AR-25 and ascend our team. The Ascension Domain only has hilly trail enemies, so it was easy. Now I can start Act 2. We meet the Man of a Million Names and then go to boil some rocks in Mondstadt. It's nice when hilly trails have pyro torches because that eliminates the need to apply pyro for overloaded and it gives us easy swirl damage for sucrose. We swiftly take them down and then go into Madame Ping's teapot. All the slimes in here we had counters for so it was easy. Later we meet Chi Chi and then go to the Guizhong Ballista. There we fight some treasure hoarders who were taken out with the same strategy as other fights. Pyro, Electro, maybe some Enemo, win. We have a date with Zhong Li and that's where Act 2 ends. Now I need to get to AR-28 to start Act 3. I did two weekly bosses to try and get better artifacts and I got some pretty decent ones for this early. And yes, I still won phase Devalin. I got the rest of the experience I needed by doing some Trial Grounds of Thunder. It's a really easy domain to do to get easy experience. Now we're at AR-28, but before moving on, let me talk about something I had realized at this point. There are some problems with doing a Genshin in Magnezlock. Number 1, elemental reactions make fights a cakewalk. Whether it be what I'm using, which is overloaded, or another reaction like Hyperbloom or Superconduct, it's basically a cheat code. 2. The variety of characters you can have in a challenge like this makes it so you will not have a bad team unless you make an effort to use characters that don't do well together. 
Three, Genshin Impact is just a pretty easy game. So what am I gonna do about this? I'm gonna remove the Jin Yang Claws. There's a part of me that feels that if I didn't have Jin Yang's shield for some points, there would be a dead character or a few by now. She's pretty much been the backbone of this entire team, but she's too good. She has good power application, pretty strong normal attacks, and can shield for us. Rejoice Jin Yang mains, your character is getting praised. But the question is, who will replace Jin Yang? Maybe Amber? No, her element skill really drags her down. Lynette? She's a pretty basic animal damage dealer who wouldn't pair well with our team. Honestly, none of my characters are a really good choice, so for now I'll put Dory back in. She gives us healing and can give us more electro output. Now let's start Act 3. We trigger the animal mechanism in the mountains with Sucrose and then fight the Millilith. Something I've noticed is that Sucrose has been consistently around half HP or lower for the entire playthrough. Disregarding that, the fight against the Millilith was pretty easy. We have a photo shoot with Ningguang and then meet up with Zhongli to sing to some flowers. I need you to sing to them. No. The Whopper Flowers are very easily taken care of and now it's time for Child. It wasn't even fair how fast his HP drained during his entire fight. The cutscene lasted longer than all the time he spent fighting us. Lastly is Osile, and a funny part about this part is that Electro Charge is unfairly broken against the Fatui early on in this fight, especially with an EM build. That's the end of Act 3. Now we need to get to Air 30 and complete the Dane's Lift quests. Before I do those, I'm going to fight some more bosses. We'll be able to ascend our characters again at Air 30, so I'm going to fight the bosses now while they're easier. None of them are hard still. For both Dane's Lift quests, a lot of the enemies are Abyss enemies. And with our team, especially Sucrose, it's really easy to take all of them down. Even if most of the enemies weren't Abyss Mages, it would have been easy. I mean, just look at how fast the Ruin Hunter's HP goes down. Couldn't even get out a single attack. Either way, once we're done with that, we can start the Inazuma Prologue quest. Once again, not much to worry about here. Something I found interesting is that Pyro enemies are probably the toughest enemies for us to fight. They take no damage from Overloaded, nor Pyro Swirl, and without that we can only deal just okay damage. We complete that quest in no time, and now we can start in Azuma Act 1. The first part is a lot of running around in Rito, but before I did the transport mission, I decided to replace Dory. It's a similar situation to Jinan in that healing is pretty powerful in this playthrough. I'm not going to ban healers, but I'm not going to use them for now. Dory's replacement will be Candace, who I said is not a shield character. Candace's boss, the algorithm of semi-transient matrix of overseer network, yes, that's his real name, isn't too hard either, so we can quickly farm that. For now I'll have her at level 50 because I'm low on experience books and I don't want to grind them. When we return to the Archon Quest, our team is Sugros, Candice, Jangling, and Lisa. In the transport mission, Candice is already proving her strength. Later in the Archon Quest, we need to do a domain with a bunch of Tenryo Commission soldiers. It may seem like I haven't had any close calls in this playthrough because I haven't been mentioning any, but there's been a lot of close calls I just haven't bothered to mention. Either way, the domain was pretty easy. At this point I was trying to hold back on using Overloaded for every fight because it's really overpowered. That's the end of Act 1, and now we need to do Ayaka's and Yoimiya's story quests. There's nothing worth commenting about these quests, but it's worth mentioning that at this point I wanted to get a 5 star from Event Banner, more particularly Raiden. I started going out of my way to try and get Primo Gems at this point, and on this wish we got something. This one, this is the 5 star, the 5 star, this is the 1, this is the, the 4 star, uh, the Chevrolet. 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 Okay, take back what I said about Navia. She literally has a gun. Chevrolet will not be used for now, but spoilers, she will be later. I had no idea what she did at the time. I had never played her. Now it's time for Act 2. The first fight is the Raiden Shogun. Even though I knew that Overloaded would work against her, I didn't use it. I mostly used Candace and Zhengling during the fight. After that, we return to Spiral Abyss to get enough Prelim Gems to do a wish. Just give me the five star, thank you! What can it be? It's Raiden, yes! Oh, all oh, that effort was not in vain, yes! Raiden Shogun was the best thing to happen to this account. If you've been anywhere around meta, you know Raiden Shogun is a very good character. Perhaps even one of the best. Obviously the character I'm replacing is Lisa, but I'm not going to replace her right now because I don't have enough level up materials and talent materials to make Raiden better than Lisa right now. The only thing that sucks about getting Raiden is now I have to do the Sarai world quest to be able to fight her boss. It's not a horribly long quest, it's just a little annoying. When we complete that, we can fight the Thunder Manifestation. 
And Zhengling's burst is great for this boss. Now we can carry on with Act 2. We save the Virgin from the Tamriel Commission soldiers easily and then go to the Resistance Camp. We do the archery demonstration with Kale and then go to the front lines and fight some very easy Tenryo Commission soldiers. We meet Mi and that's where Act 2 ends. Act 3 starts with us fighting the Ronin around Watatsumi Island. This fight is a good example of how overpowered Overload it is. At the three Electro Monuments, we trick them with Lisa and made quick work of the Electro Lotro that appears. The Virgin dies. And now we need to go to the Delusion Factory. I have to start giving props to Sucrose. Her swirl is really strong and her grouping is really useful. Using a combination of Sucrose's swirl and Zhengling and Lisa's Overloaded, we destroyed the Delusion Factory. Soon after that, I finally replaced Lisa with Raiden after grinding Raiden's talent books. It feels bad replacing Lisa, but when I have an option between Lisa and Raiden, I'm always going to choose Raiden. We meet the best in Izuma character and then fight a bunch of Tenryo Commission soldiers. They were beaten by the same combination of Swirl and Overloaded. Next is Senora, and I'm just going to give you timestamps for how long each phase was. Phase 1 was 16 seconds, and Phase 2 was a minute and 36 seconds. Bosses stand no chance against our team comp. Lastly is the Raiden Shogun, and Phase 1 went pretty much the same as it did the first fight, and in Phase 2 we beat her in a minute. The duel of Zhang Li and Candice is a duo I did not expect to be so good. With that, Act 3 is over. Now we need to get to AR-35 to start Sumeru, as well as do the Chasm Dainsliff quest. You might be aware that you have to complete the Chasm World quest to be able to start the Chasm Dainsliff quest, but in 4.3 they changed it so you can start the Dainsliff Chasm quest without having to do the World quest. It is the best change they've made since 1.0 to be honest. We're already at AR-35, so we can start the Ascension Domain right away. And it was pretty simple. It still only has Helitrail enemies, so there's nothing to worry about. The Dainsliff Chasm quest is also pretty easy. There's a lot of Abyss enemies that are easy to take out because of Sucrose, who's pretty much the MVP of this team at this point. I haven't been using Sucrose as much as leading up to this playthrough, but it's honestly reminding me of how much I love Sucrose. She's a very effective grouper and swirler, and she's adorable. Perfect combination. I'm not going to grind boss materials because I don't think my team needs it, honestly. Now we're at AR-35 we can start Sumeru. The team right now is Sucrose, Candice, Zhengling, and Raiden Shogun. First part with combat is the Withering Zone. One of the reasons Sucrose is so great is because I got her best weapon, Sacrificial Fragments. It makes her elemental skills long cooldown more manageable. We clear the Withering Zone and later do the Dream Domain. It was more simple enemies which were easily taken out. Thank you. I take it back. Look, if we don't acknowledge it, then it didn't happen. We go to Sumeru City and get our Akasha Terminal and then go to Port Ormos and meet the hot tall man of Sumeru. Later we also meet Dory and buy some stuff from her. We test out one of the things that we bought on some fungi who pretty much died as soon as they spawned. Later we fight some Aramites at the dock and man Sucrose is just the best. We might as well just call this challenge the Sucrose Show. Next is Act 2 and the only thing that's worth mentioning is the one combat part. Even then it's not hard, just more Aramites. Act 3 starts with us meeting and going into the forest to fight some Aramites. They were easily taken down with Overloaded. In the desert, we fight some Rift Hounds. The first wave was weak to Electro and the second wave was destroyed by Swirl. That's the end of Act 3. We start Act 4 by finding more Aramites. For groups like these, when we don't have Sucrose's burst, we just kind of slowly take them down one by one. At the Elazar Hospital, there were some Hilitros and a Geo Lawachurl, which were both taken out with ease. Later in the Archon Quest, we go to the Mausoleum of King Deshret, and there's a lot of fungi. Samara's two favorite enemies are fungi and Aramites, I swear. Even the last room, which is usually a problem, was pretty easy. Probably because the Goat Sucrose can knock down the Dendro fungi out of the air with her elemental skill. Now it's time for Act 5. The first fight is with Aramites once again- What was I saying about Aramites being one of Samara's favorite enemies? Later at Party DI, we need to fight some Fatui members. The Electro Hammer guy continued his streak of being really fucking annoying, and Raiden might have been knocked down to red HP, but it wasn't awful. Hey Scaramouche, what's your favorite horror movie? Saw. A lot of cutscenes later, we can do the DS Foundry. Besides the Electro Hammer guy still being the bane of my existence, and Sucrose having a... moment, it wasn't too bad. No time for Scaramouche. Honestly, I'd say Phase 1 was harder than Phase 2. He was pretty quickly taken down in Phase 1, but Phase 2 was a big joke. 
Sucrose destroys the Nirvana engines, yes that's their real names, and we can also take him down while he's stunned, which is something that none of my other challenge playthroughs have been able to do so far. Also Candace dealt over 10k, and it's funny to think that Candace is the biggest damage dealer in a team with Raiden. Then again, in terms of cumulative damage, Sucrose is probably the best. At the polluted part of Ermitsoul, we fight some Rift Hounds who drained a lot of HP, but didn't have any real way of killing us. On the boat, there are some Hillitrolls and Electro Lawatrol. I almost had a heart attack while trying to beat them, but it was fine. I, um, I just had a heart attack. I just had That's the last enemy of Act 5, so there's no more chances of losing any more characters, right? This is the worst thing that could have ever happened. If you're wondering why I didn't pull out my wind glider, it's because the normal attack animation was playing, so I couldn't, and by the time it registered my spacebar inputs, she had already hit the ground. I would have rather lost any other character in the party. Yes, that includes Raiden Shogun. The question now is, who do I replace her with? All right, team, let's move it out. I'll be honest, the only reason I chose her was because she's the newest character. But even with that odd reasoning, she goes great with this team. She buffs teams with Pyro and Electro characters and goes well with overloaded teams. Also, a thing I didn't notice until a while later is that she can also heal. It's not a great heal, but it's a heal nonetheless. She's definitely not better than Sucrose, but she's a good character. Grinding a whole new character was annoying, and it did take a while, but I could do it. I explored Dragonspine for some artifacts and got pretty much nothing, so I left. After a while, she's at level 60, and now I can finish Dumeru. Now I need to get to Era 40 to start Fontaine, and we also need to do Kari Barret. In the middle of doing Kari Barret, we reached Era 40, so no need to worry about grinding to Era 40. The only fight worth worrying about in this quest is the one against the Cryo Abyss Herald. Once he gets its shield, its shield basically just disappears because of our two Pyro characters. Now I can start Fontaine. The final team going into Fontaine is Chevrez, Candace, Zhangling, and Raiden Shogun. We meet Linny and Lynette at Romaritine Harbor and then go to the Court of Fontaine where we meet Child. He takes this fight for us, which is lame. Later we go to Linny and Lynette's show and somebody dies there. The rest of Act 1 is us being detectives for Linny and Lynette, which isn't interesting, so let's skip to Act 2. In this act, we're with the Queen of Fontaine and we're trying to investigate her dad's death. Our investigation leads us to this underwater domain where we can finally fight something. All the enemies are Gardamax, and none of them are really that hard. The duo of Electro and Pyro Gardamax could have been difficult, but it wasn't at all. This guy goes to jail, but so does Child. That's where Act 2 ends, and Act 3 and 4 are all dialogue and cutscenes, so we'll skip to Act 5. Act 5 starts with the Tower Domain. The floor with the three Mitotrolls was pretty easy because their axes were Pyro, which gave us easy overloaded procs. I was worried for the last floor, but because of a combination of Raiden and Zhengling's burst, we were able to complete it unscathed. After that we put Farina on trial for not being the Archon, and it turns out she is guilty. That leads to the all devouring Narwhal appearing, and that leads to us having to sit through Farina and Fosalore plot. That is after defeating these three Gardamex. But who cares about them when we have a Narwhal to defeat? The all devouring Narwhal is a very underwhelming boss in this quest. For the Narwhal phase you just have to wait until he eats you, and then in the Shadow phase you just have to dodge until you can hit him without a Numa or Osea. We beat that relatively quickly, and that's the end of Act 5. That means I beat a Genshin Impact Nuzlocke. The final team we had was Chevrez, Candace, Zhengling, and Raiden Shogun, but let's not forget about the characters that helped us along the way. Lisa, Dory, and Jinyan were the three characters that helped us that didn't die, but Sucrose, who helped us throughout most of the playthrough, was the only one to die. Rest in peace, Sucrose. On the tier list of difficulty, this is going in front of Sayu only, but below no artifacts. This was a pretty easy challenge, but there were some points where it got a little tense and very grindy. Also, a Genshin Impact Nuzlocke is very dependent on your luck, and it's different for everybody who plays one. To commemorate Xingqiu getting a skin in 4.4, my next challenge will be Xingqiu only. But until then, I'll leave you with that.